The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. So how do I get my screwdriver back? Should I use a broom like a sensible person or buy something off the shelf like a loser? I know, I spent a lot of hours of my time and money and parts and awesome stuff to build a remote controlled robot to retrieve my screwdriver. And also it's the perfect excuse to build a robotic platform that I wanted for a while. So let's get started. Amazing hacks, inspired designs, each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and in this episode, we are building a simple robotics platform based on the Raspberry Pi, the Pi HQ camera, and a motion control kit that we develop in this episode, so you can build robots for our kind of purposes the easy way. And also I need to retrieve my screwdriver because I actually need that one. Let's get started. And I, I really need that one. So we are building a useful robotic platform, not like people that build like, I don't know, Terminator heads with AI boards in them that get terrifying when they seem to freak out. No, this time we're building a sensible robot. So I'm using the Raspberry Pi 3A+. Why that? You will scream in the comments, I already hear you. Because the Pi 3A+, has its applications for certain use cases that are still better than newer modules. I couldn't get hold of a Pi Compute module in time and also I want to get familiar with the platform first before I put it in an actual project. And the other one is that the 3A Plus uses a lot less power. It's not overpowered for my application like a Pi 4 would, so I expect longer runtime for my robot. And also it has a bit of smaller form factor, so that's also a benefit. Of course, I need a camera. I'm choosing the Raspberry Pi high quality camera and the wide angle lens for it, so to get a good field of view for my robot. And also we need some additional hardware. And I decided, hey, I make my own add-on board not like a hat, because hats have certain specifications, but it's an add-on board for the Raspberry Pi that has PWM channels, 16, we only need four this time. It has analog in and an IMU, because I want to expand that platform in the future with your ideas. So if you have ideas for robot, robot stuff that we can build and put on that platform and make it cooler and make it fancy and make it do stuff, post them on the Element 14 community and we'll pick all of your cool ideas and just build them and put them to on the platform and share them with everyone. So to make my robot move around, I want to use servos. Servos usually use a PWM signal to get them told what they have to do. I'm using continuous rotation servos this time because I want to make like a sort of wheeled robot, like with weird wheels so it can hop over obstacles a little bit. It's easier to build a tracked robot and easier to build a legged robot. So that's a good starting point, I figured. And everybody can recreate that. And also, if we have PWM signals, we can also feed those into other motor controllers to control bigger motors if we ever want to. So that's the minimum capability that I want. And because PWM signal generation takes a lot of CPU time, I want to offload that from the Raspberry Pi because that is already uh, tasked with video streaming and uh, receiving my commands over the network so I can control it over my local network. And the offloading to a dedicated chip allows us to run multiple processes at once and we don't have to worry about keeping the timing. So let's start with the electronics design in KiCad. Over there. Follow me. Welcome to my computer. Let's look at the schematic in KiCad. First we have, this is the overall uh, look of it. Over here we have the GPIOs of the Raspberry Pi, so that's compatible with the normal 40 pin pinout. At first I wanted to make a version that is also compatible uh, compatible with the Compute Module 4, but I couldn't get 
the compute module in time for the project. So I think a lot of people will have Raspberry Pis at home. So let's go with the old form factor and maybe I do another version in the future that is compatible with both. So this is the pinout that we already have. Our main components are this uh, PCA9685 PW112. This is a uh, LED driver that is commonly used to drive servo motors. And this is compatible with a lot of uh, libraries that you can already find. Uh, for example, there's one from Adafruit and there is a pip library for Python. So that's a readily used component. So we know that works good out of the box. So I always try to use stuff that people can easily uh, also use. Then we have this, an ADS1015, which is an analog to digital converter. <laughs> so to speak an ADC. We have four channels of analog inputs and we convert them to I2C. The other chip is also an I2C device. And then we have another I2C device, which is this one over here. And that is an IMU, an inertial measurement unit. In this case, it's the MPU 6050. Also a commonly available part, also a part that you can get libraries for Python and Arduino. So it's easy to use. In this project, I'm focusing on the PWM functionality, but that is already on there for future expansion and also for you to experiment and have fun with it. And also we have a lot of uh, header pins. These are for the servo motors. Always stick to the pinout. Five volts is in the middle, ground is on one side and signal is on the other one. That's the standard servo pinout. This makes sense because if you plug it in backwards, it just doesn't work. You can't damage anything. So that's pretty cool with that pinout. And also we need power. And this time we are using like a special property of one of these low dropout voltage regulators. We have the LM1085 fixed at five volts, two of those, and the MCP1825S at 3.3 volts. So what's the matter with them? They all are connected to the screw terminal, uh, which will connect to a LiPo. And I'm using a two cell LiPo, but they would uh, be tolerant also for a three or four cell. But I stick with two cell because that's just additional heat that we have to burn. So two cell LiPo goes in there, is converted to five volts that will power the Pi. And the other one is connected directly to the servo motors, also at five volts. And this one goes to 3.3 volts and powers all the additional circuitry we put on the board. So those are all 3.3 volt devices. Some of them are compatible with five volts, but I need to run them at 3.3 volts. So I won't overpower the pins of the Raspberry Pi because those are only 3.3 volt tolerant, remember? So it's all for safety. And this has a nice uh, little feature or it's not a bug, it's a feature. Let's call it a feature. So when I started powering up the unit, I expected that these won't be able to be recognized until there is power applied to the LiPo terminal. But actually they are recognized because when you put five volts in this end, it kind of powers through the LM1085 in reverse, which powers the other one, which will put out five volts for the servos. And also it powers through to the uh, MCP that will put out the 3.3 volts and that is enough to power all the peripherals and it's enough to drive one servo but I wouldn't drive more because you may burn out a pin of the pipe because the Pi is in that case the, the Pi provides all the current for the servos in that configuration so you don't want that uh, for testing it that was great that's really a handy feature so you don't have to apply a lipo or the high voltage to your system just to know all the uh, the peripherals are recognized over I2C, you can just uh, power them directly. And the moment I plug in a LiPo, I need to make sure that I don't power the Pi from USB anymore. So shut it down, apply the LiPo, then it will start everything powered by the LiPo. And then you can connect as many servos as you want. These were the main steps for the PCB design. If you want to get more in-depth on that, 
there is a bonus video on the Element 14 community on the video page linked below where you can see more about that specific section of the build. Also other sections are linked there. And there is also a dedicated episode to PCB design. So if you're more interested in that topic, element14.com forward slash presents, there is everything you need. Uh, and now let's wait for the boards and assemble it. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics, and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. Of course, a robot is not only electronics, there's also a mechanical component to it. So we need a case, we need moving parts and stuff, and I designed those in FreeCAD. So here's the FreeCAD segment. Let's look at what I designed. Now we are in FreeCAD. And FreeCAD is an awesome program. I just recently learned to use it and it can do a lot of stuff. So this is actually the first real project that I did with it. So that's why I kept myself to more simple geometries, so I actually know what I'm doing. So we have side plates here. These are used to mount the servos, and I've given them a little bit of slack because a lot of servos differ a little bit. There is a standard, but it's not like a rule. It's more like a common sense to adhere to it. But some manufacturers have a little bit more thicker servos, others have thinner servos, and uh, Positions for the screws also vary slightly, so I gave them a little bit of slop, so more different servos will fit in there. And then we have this inner portion where the Raspberry Pi, the camera and all the stuff will fit. If I remove the, the cover, you can see it. The cover is also where the Raspberry Pi and all the stuff will mount to, so you can push it uh, or pull it out at once from the design. And also this is where the camera gets mounted to with a little standoff or a spacer as my buddy Ivan would call it. And then we have the wheels and the wheels are asymmetrical. So they have a rounded portion and they have like this square portion. And that's uh, the idea behind that is on some surfaces you will have more traction with these hard edges and on some it will be easier to slip around with these rounded portions. So I hope that the mix will give it a little bit of variance. Also, I don't mirror them on printing. I print four times the same wheel. So on the other side, these are actually the other way around. So it will make a difference if you're going forwards or backwards. So if you can't reach a point one way, then you can try it the other way. And so that should cancel each other out, maybe provide some more options for locomotion. So these are the main points of the mechanical design. If you want to see a more in-depth version, head on over to the Element 14 community on the video page linked below. I have like the full version so you can see what all these parts do and how they should fit together with future parts that you in the community design. I 3D printed my parts in very bright colors. These are leftovers from previous projects. You may know which one. I use bright colors because that tells me this is an early version, so I print some of these, make sure they fit. And if they do, the design moves onward or I make changes. And if I assemble the project with previous version parts, newer and older versions, then I know exactly which ones are the early versions that need to be replaced before the project is finished. So that's easy to keep track. Also, I use up old filament. 
I tried to 3D print the wheels in flexible material, but the prints kept failing and failing. And also when I finally got one that was correct, it didn't really work. It doesn't slip enough. The robot needs a little bit of slippage, so it acts like a tank, but has actual wheels. And if they have too much grip, it just sticks and the servo stall. So I want a little bit of slippage to it. So now that we have some mechanical parts, Let's put all that stuff together and then make it do things. <laughs> it works! <laughs> and left. And right. Right. Yeah. And back. Looks like the robot is moving. Time to try it out. And now that I think of it, uh, maybe we should retrieve the screwdriver. Uh, I kind of forgot what was the point of the whole project. So let's get that screwdriver to the command central on my PC. The connection is established. I have here the commands for forward, backward and stuff. And over here, this is basically already opened the link here, stream video. So if I activate that, I should get a video stream. So we have, this is U4L streaming server, a ready-made application that works a lot better than anything I could come up with. I tried it in Flask and while it works, it wasn't perfect. And yeah, I wanted it to be a little bit smoother, but it's also uh, reliant on how good my network performs. So if I now start the server, oh, there's my, oh, come, don't hang up. There is my face from the second camera. I have actually have it here so you can see that's all true and dandy. So I need to make that a little bit smaller so you can better see what's going on. And now I put this on the floor and then we give it some commands. Let's drive around. Okay, these are my waste paper bins. That looks like the workbench over there. It's like driving a little tank. Okay, uh, hit the tripod. Okay. Navigate. Okay, I think I had a little. Oh, okay, I'm stuck somewhere. Need to go backwards. Okay, and now turn. Okay. Ooh, there's a rug in the way. I hope we have enough traction on that rug. Ah, oh, yeah. Seems like we do. Okay, that's a full 90 degree turn. Okay, can we go under that? There is the screwdriver. There it is. Okay, come on. Onwards. I don't know if you're outside the workbench, but I have a screwdriver in front of me that I think is not stuck. Okay, there's the screwdriver. There's the workbench. It's free. It's free. I can pick it up. Gotcha! Hello! So this is my Raspberry Pi based robotic platform. It even was able to retrieve my screwdriver, thankfully. So now I can twist with power again and build more of these or additional modules for it. And I want to know your ideas. What would you do instead of wheels? Tracks? Legs? Would you put a gripper arm on there or a shovel or whatever? Let me know your ideas on the Element 14 community and we maybe make a follow-up and build all sorts of crazy stuff on our Raspberry Pi robotics platform. And if you built your own version, please share them with us. I want to showcase them on our live streams. I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me. <laughs>